Good morning. We begin with general questions and we start with question number one from Ben McPherson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what impact UK Government welfare reform as part of their austerity agenda is having on homelessness and rough sleeping in Scotland. Minister Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, President Officer. The UK Government's welfare cuts have increased the financial pressures on households and increased the risk of homelessness or hardship. Uh, we know from the National Audit Report published in September that the UK Government did not effectively assess the impact of welfare reforms on homelessness. And from a survey by Street Soccer out this week, that one third of people believe they or someone they know could be at risk of homelessness. Cuts in welfare spend in Scotland will reach £4 billion a year by the end of the decade, which impact on some of the poorest and most vulnerable people in our society. Every year, we spend over £100 million to help relieve the worst impact of UK government welfare cuts and support those on low incomes, including mitigating the bedroom tax, which helps over 70,000 households in Scotland to sustain their tenancies. And we also support people in crisis through the Scottish Welfare Fund. We have strong homelessness rights in Scotland and a focus on preventing homelessness. I would, would prefer if we were able to use that £100 million to enable us to invest in our priorities, including tackling homelessness. Ben McPherson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Presiding Officer, earlier this month, yourself, the Minister, Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance, the Deputy First Minister, myself and an inspirational 8,000 other people took part in the Social Bite Sleep in the Park initiative to help end homelessness and rough sleeping in our country and to help alleviate the difficulties that the UK Government's policies are causing for people. In order to support initiatives like the Sleep in the Park initiative and in contrast to the UK Government's policies, can the Minister provide an update on the proactive and purposeful action that the Scottish Government is taking to tackle homelessness and rough sleeping in Scotland in partnership with local authorities, the third sector and others? Minister. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, as Mr McPherson knows, the Scottish Government established this Homelessness and Rough Sleeping Action Group, uh, which is a short life action group involving the third sector, housing associations, academia and local authorities. Uh, I'm pleased to say that since the uh, group was established in October, it has moved quickly to recommend actions to minimise rough, rough sleeping this winter. Uh, those actions will increase emergency accommodation uh, and also increase outreach pr provision for people who are at risk of rough sleeping and will be cr crucial in supporting and protecting people uh, this winter. Uh, the Scottish Government accepted all of the recommendations uh, of the group and we are moving rapidly to implementation, uh, backed with a total funding package of £328,000, including £262,000 from the Scottish Government uh, and £66,000 from Social Bite, the Simon Community Govan Law Centre in crisis. Uh, we continue to work with local authorities and other partners through the Homelessness Prevention and Strategy Group uh, and the regional housing options hubs to support councils in the prevention of homelessness and the discharge of their duties uh, towards homeless people. Polly McNeill. Glasgow has had a higher rate of adults claiming out-of-work benefits than any other Scottish city and it has a high rate of adults claiming incapacity benefit. Does the Cabinet Secretary share my concerns about the rollout of universal credit scheduled for Glasgow next year, given the impact on housing and the impact we already know that universal credit has had on tenants? Minister. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer. Yes, I do share uh, Ms McNeill's concerns. Uh, many uh, have warned the UK Government uh, about the rollout of un universal credit credit, which uh, in my opinion has been somewhat sh shambolic. Um, I was very pleased to see the Church of Scotland this week also uh, criticise uh, the UK government for um, the rollout of universal credit. On top of that, uh, we have also seen the benefit cap, which has had a major impact uh, in families uh, right across Scotland and beyond. And I really do think that the UK government should have a real rethink uh, about their welfare reform policies, about their social security cuts and end austerity so that we can protect the most vulnerable people in our society. Question number two, Dean Lockhart. Thank you. To ask the Scottish government what action it is taking to reduce diagnostic waiting times for children with autism. Minister Maureen Watt. 
integrated joint boards are responsible for the strategic planning and decision making for all services delegated to them, including diagnostic services for autistic people, in line with their statutory obligations and Scottish Government policy. Health and social care partnerships are responsible for the delivery of local services based on the planning decision by integrated joint boards and are therefore responsible for the implementation of local autism strategies and action plans. However, improving diagnostic services remains a Scottish Government priority for the Scottish strategy for autism. It is recognised that waiting times are too high across both children and adult diagnostic services and that is why the Scottish Government is investing in an improvement programme to work with health and social care partnerships to reduce waiting times for autism assessments. Dean Lockhart. I thank the Minister for that response. Last week, one of my constituents received confirmation that her 11-year-old son, who was first referred to the Autism Community Assessment Pathway in October 2016, will not have his first appointment until next year. The reason given is that the Children's Health Service in Fife has been unable to recruit for any of its advertised posts. I'm sure the Minister will agree that having to wait for more than a year and a half to see a specialist is unacceptable. Notwithstanding the steps that the Minister has outlined, how can she provide assurance to my constituents that the specialists required will actually be recruited? Minister. Well, I am disappointed to hear of your constituents' uh, case and that they have to wait so long for an autism diagnosis. And I think it highlights to me the very fragility of many of our mental health services across the country. We are investing more. We have 150 million extra in mental health services and the health improvement teams are working with a range of health boards and, and social care partnerships across the country to make sure that in the future they have sustainable services. Question, oh, Question number three, Murda Fraser. Uh, thank you. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government how its draft budget will grow the Scottish economy. Cabinet Secretary Derek Mackay. The draft budget delivers over £4 billion of infrastructure, a 64% uplift in the economy, jobs and fair work portfolio, a new £150 million Building Scotland Fund, procurement for a £600 million investment in our R100 programme, £2.4 billion in our enterprise and skills bodies, and the most attractive system of business rates in the UK. These major investments will underpin our focus on innovation, infrastructure and investment, internationalisation and inclusive growth. Murder Fraser. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his response and take the opportunity to wish him a very happy Christmas. And um, in the um, uh, Finance and Constitution Committee yesterday, we heard evidence from the Scottish Fiscal Commission around their uh, forecast for Scottish economic growth over the next four years, which lag far behind the rest of the UK, as the Cabinet Secretary will know. Perhaps more worryingly, the forecast for productivity in Scotland also lag far behind the rest of the UK. What specific measures in the Cabinet Secretary's draft budget will deliver improvements in productivity? Cabinet Secretary. Well, can I also wish Murdo Fraser a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year uh, when it comes as well. I think that's the nicest thing Murdo's ever said to me uh, in, uh, in, in the chamber, but it's nice to see the, the festive uh, season having its effect and even even Murdo Fraser. But uh, there, I, I don't have enough time uh, in uh, these uh, general questions to cover all the range of actions that will make a difference uh, on economic growth. But I am convinced that the investments we're putting in place and, and creating the right competitive environment for businesses and in supporting innovation and internationalisation and in addressing skills issues and supporting uh, businesses to, to upskill and grow and take advantage of a uh, digital uh, potential, I think will ensure that our economy uh, uh, performs uh, more strongly. Of course, uh, SFC forecasts are absolutely critical to government, but there's a range of other forecasts as well that were far more positive about Scotland's uh, economic prospects. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary mentions the range of non-domestic rates reliefs that he has in place. Isn't it actually the case that there's a lack of evidence about the effectiveness of this rather blunt approach and that we'd be far better off focusing that kind of initiative on those businesses which do achieve some of the social and economic priorities of the Scottish Government, whether around paying the real living wage, investing in skills or meeting the priorities in the business pledge? Cabinet Secretary. If I can 
be specific around one point on that small business bonus. The government has committed to undertake a review and that's to ensure that we can maximise the economic and social benefits of that particular scheme. So I think it is true to say that it's been a lifeline to our businesses and supported many communities, but we do of course want to make sure that we can do even more with the reliefs and the financial support that we provide to our business community. Question number four, Alexander Stewart. That multidisciplinary goal setting is in place for stroke patients as soon as possible as part of their rehabilitation. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robinson. We expect health boards to take forward the actions in priority seven, transition to the community, and priority eight, supported self management and living with stroke in our stroke improvement plan 2014, which includes an action for goal setting to ensure the appropriate care is provided for those individuals in need. The Scottish Stroke Improvement Team supports managed clinical networks to evaluate board performance, identify areas of concern and work with them to implement local action plans to improve the delivery of stroke care across Scotland. This support includes visiting all boards at least once per year to review stroke care with board representatives to assess performance, to highlight achievements and good practice and to formulate an improvement plan for areas of concern where necessary. Alexander Stewart. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. The 2017 Scottish Stroke Improvement Programme report shows that multidisciplinary goal setting has only been fully implemented in three health boards. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree this is insufficient for stroke survivors and should they, they should not have to uh, recover uh, and deal with a postcode lottery? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we know that early assessment and the provision of rehabilitation within the first few days following an acute stroke by multidisciplinary working does achieve the best outcome uh, for the, the person. And that's why, of course, in my initial answer, I referred to the assessment of board's performance and, the, and more importantly, the improvement plans that they are then expected to take forward. Uh, and that is something uh, that uh, we will ensure continues to make sure that stroke services uh, are uh, improved across the, the whole of Scotland in every board area. Emma Harper. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government what information is available to people who have experienced a stroke to ensure that they are aware of the services that they should receive in the community. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government continues to work with NHS boards and the third sector to ensure that stroke patients and their families have access to the right care and support. The Chest, Heart and Stroke Scotland interactive self-management website, Self Help for Stroke, funded by the Scottish Government, can be used by anyone affected by stroke. Stroke services have or are in the process of implementing a person-centred approach, including goal setting and providing a range of self-management approaches. Question number five, Jamie Halcrow Johnson. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on its work to reduce waiting times in NHS Grampian. Cabinet Secretary. The Scottish Government is working closely with uh, the colleagues in NHS Grampian to support improvements around key performance targets. NHS Grampian has received more than £8 million this year to improve all parts of the patient pathway, outpatient consultation, diagnostic tests and inpatient and day case treatment. A number of initiatives are underway to support sustainable improvements, including additional theatre sessions being delivered across a range of specialties from January 2018. We've also allocated more than £1.3 million to NHS Grampian to support resilience across unscheduled care pathways over winter. Jamie Halker Johnson. Thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Uh, I wrote to the Cabinet Secretary some months ago about the case um, of my constituent who's been waiting almost a year for cardiac surgery. The Cabinet to, uh, Secretary, to her credit, agreed that that was unacceptable. However, we now know that the recent figures uh, show that only 33% of patients for child and adolescent mental health services were being seen within the 18 week target, by far the worst record in Scotland and far below the national figure of 73%. Will the Cabinet Secretary agree that too is un uh, unacceptable and make clear in what time frame she expects waiting times in Grand? to reach national waiting times targets? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, as I laid out, the uh, NHS Grampian has been supported to make improvements in waiting times across all specialties. Uh, as Maureen Watt uh, um, uh, responded to an earlier question, we have a huge programme of work across CAMS, investment in, in CAMS, more staffing 
and uh, improvement plans for each board to take forward to improve their waiting times for CAMs. We know uh, that uh, some boards have further to travel uh, in making those improvements, but we'll continue to work with NHS Grampian and others to make sure that happens. And of course, investment is hugely important, and we have made uh, our commitment uh, in order to uh, fund uh, the uh, NHS going forward. What I can say is that if the Tory tax plans were followed uh, in 2018-19, then Grampian would receive 49.5 million less oh. than it will receive oh. under our budget. So perhaps the member might want to support our budget to ensure that NHS Grampian gets the support that it requires and the resources that it requires. And Gillian Martin. Gillian Martin. <clears throat> Thank you, President Officer. Cold weather significantly increases the pressure on our accident and emergency departments. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what additional steps have been taken to help winter planning and support people to transfer through the system over the winter months? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the, the combination of flu-like illness, norovirus and orthopaedic trauma has caused significant pressures on both A&E services but also the ambulance service in response uh, to, uh, to those uh, increase in, in cases. Uh, however, we have invested £22.4 million this year, a record level uh, in any year to support unscheduled care and winter resilience across health and social care services. But this is a challenging time. Uh, winter is always challenging, but particularly uh, the last uh, couple of weeks uh, have been particularly challenging. And I would just want to put on record my thanks to all the staff who are working so hard in those challenging circumstances. And Lee MacArthur. Thank you very much. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that the capacity issues in NHS Grampian are having an impact on patients in the island. She will also be aware that NHS Orkney are looking at developing relationships with other health boards to address those long waiting times. So will the Cabinet Secretary ensure that NHS Orkney is able to redeploy the full amount of the resource that is currently paid to NHS Grampian to deliver these services? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'm certainly happy to uh, discuss that further with Liam MacArthur. What's important is that patients in NHS Orkney uh, get uh, access to, to prompt treatment. Now, traditionally, as Liam MacArthur has said, that has been provided by NHS Grampian, but of course we have our, our National Hospital in the, the Golden Jubilee, which provides uh, a number uh, of fantastic services for patients across the whole of Scotland. So, very happy to, to write to Liam MacArthur with uh, further details, but uh, if he uh, wants to, to have a meeting uh, to discuss this further, then I would be happy to, to sit down with him and discuss it. Question number six, Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will set targets for income maximisation and help reduce the overall amount of benefits that go unclaimed. Uh, Minister Jean Freeman. Income maximisation is a key element of the Child Poverty Scotland Act in terms of the delivery plan, which we will publish in uh, April 2018. Income targets are already at the heart uh, of that, and income maximisation will be an important element of action taken. We already fund a range of welfare advice services from the Fairest Scotland budget to support people to maximise income and support uptake of benefits. Over the course of this parliamentary term, we will continue to deliver a programme of activity to increase uptake of social security by encouraging people to exercise their rights and claim the benefits they are entitled to. And I'm grateful to uh, Citizens Advice Scotland and Young Scott for their engagement with us on that. Uh, and as the member knows, with Mr Rowley's support, we have discussed a joint approach on this with COSLA, and I look forward to progressing that further in the coming months. Mark Griffin. I thank the Minister for that answer. The Minister has also agreed to a duty on the, no, the new Social Security Agency, but the Minister has said before that she wants to place the emphasis on that devolved Scottish system. And surely there should be a, an approach of no wrong door in Scotland, and it's the in, in the interest of the government and the agency to set a target to increase uh, the uptake of benefits across all areas, reserved, devolved and local. Minister. Well, as Mr Griffin well knows, uh, let me make two points. First of all, you can only set a target on the uptake of benefits if you have a baseline to start from. And as he well knows and members across this chamber know, uh, unfortunately, the UK government's DWP does not collect that data. So we're a bit stuck in setting the baseline from which we might then move on to a target. Can I also make the point 
gently, given this is our last day before the festive recess, that perhaps our colleagues in the Labour benches would be better to turn their attention to the UK government's failure to uh, uh, mount a benefit uptake campaign than to simply presume that this Scottish government will continue to pick up for the mess and the gaps that the UK government's policies continue to cause our citizens across Scotland. And that may be a more effective way to join with us and make sure that our Conservative colleagues here in Holyrood and those at Westminster understand the damage that they're causing and the responsibility they have to make redress. Well